In today's hard-to-believe but not hard-to-believe news, a Florida man with a machete threatened two female Harris supporters at a voting precinct, and he did so in the name of Donald Trump, and I have the totally toxic masculinity story for you next. Please have a look at these photos of Kaleeb James Williams gleefully waving his machete. He was with seven other young men who were holding Trump flags, and he reportedly gestured his weapon towards two older women who were holding Kamala Harris signs. And let's call those the before images, and in just a minute, I'll share the after in the form of a video that shows him significantly less gleeful while handcuffed at his arraignment. But first, let's explore what is likely the fuel for Machete Man's dark soul. I think everyone paying attention has noticed something over the last two months. Kamala Harris has created a remarkable gender gap with women rallying behind her. Whereas Trump has doubled and tripled down his aggressive rhetoric in direct appeals to young males. He's been on a tour of bro culture podcasts and his speaker lineups are looking like sausage parties. A release of rage. She is the Antichrist. Her and her pimp handlers will destroy our country. She is some sick that Hillary Clinton, huh? What a sick son of a The whole party, a bunch of degenerates, low lives, jewel haters and low lives. No, they've done very bad things to this country. They are indeed the enemy from within. And, but this is who we're fighting. Please stand by to have a look at Florida Machete Man humbled and in custody in just a few seconds. But first, this MSNBC report explores the backlash of Trump's bro culture strategy and reveals how the recent disastrous bro-tastic comedian appearance likely came to be by way of the brocaster in chief himself, Joe Rogan. Even Megyn Kelly, of course, formerly of Fox News, uh, had this to say. It was too brotastic. Okay. It was. You're trying to win an election in which you're hemorrhaging female voters. Maybe when you present in front of hundreds, thousands at least, at Madison Square Garden, you clean up the bro talk just a little so you don't alienate women in the middle of America who are already on the fence about Republicans. So speaking of bros, Alex, Joe Rogan is actually apparently the person who recommended to the campaign back in August that they use this comedian. Watch this from this is from August. It would behoove him to hire a few great comics to just tour with them and just write oh one liners about all these different people. I mean, if he could remember them, I mean, oh I, think, I know God. he likes to go off his own head, but sure. if he could remember a few Hinchcliffe bangers, <laughs> if he hires Hinchcliffe to take him on the road, <laughs> <laughs> do you know how f***ing insane that would be? Yeah. Well, you know what? It turned out to be pretty f insane. <laughs> the Trump campaign is both confident and arrogant. So if you're not completely broed out by now, here's the details on the machete dude for Trump, along with insight from David Schuster. To say your piece is your First Amendment protected right, but that goes out the window the moment you raise a machete over your head in a threatening manner. Yes, a machete. Neptune Beach, Florida police say they arrested 18-year-old Caleb Williams waving that 18-inch blade. Police allege he was threatening Democratic voters walking into an early voting site. Mr. Williams decided to brandish that machete over his head at two female victims, ages 71 and 54 years of age which were in fear at the, that point, had called the police, and we arrived less than one minute later. This is Mr. Williams' mugshot. He's been charged with aggravated assault and improper exhibition of a weapon. Police say he was with seven other teenagers whose behavior did not cross into criminality, even though the group effort was clearly offensive. The group was there for no other reason but for ill intentions to cause a disturbance. This is not an incident of solely a First Amendment protected right, but rather one where they were simply there to cause a ruckus. I'm going to set bond in account one at 50,003. You're, you'll be outfitted with a GPS monitor not to go within a thousand feet of a polling place. Count two is improper exhibition of the firearm. Bond will be set at 5,003. Those are your bonds, all the calls been found, public defenders appointed, and your past date is November 20th. One can only hope that Caleb Williams in Neptune Beach, Florida gets prosecuted to the fullest extent possible under the law. No more, no less. 
So obviously, Trump has been aggressively signaling bro culture to get out the vote and support him. And as we know, his courting of them and their support of him knows no limits. At the end of the day, a comedian with misogynistic and racist jokes really does not compare to the damage that can be done by white supremacy groups who thinks he represents them, insurrectionists who thinks he's commanding them, the machete man who is inspired by him, or worse yet. Donald Trump has now weaponized this demographic both figuratively and literally, and you would expect nothing less from an authoritarian who has said he wants to be dictator on day one, the pinnacle of toxic masculinity. And when he says he wants to make America great again, he's talking about a time before society shifted, a time when rogue men could go unchecked. And when Kamala Harris talks about turning the page, she's talking about a world where a toxic Donald Trump is not an inspiration to an 18-year-old Florida man. Let's hope this awful event was an isolated incident and it's not another new normal brought to us by Donald Trump. Please stay safe and let's continue to occupy democracy together and you know what to do in just six days.